If you think about all the best high flyers in WWE, well, on that list, you'll have to think of Neville. He was one of the breakout stars during NXT and the launch of the WWE Network. However, he was forced to sit on the sideline much of his career. And why was that? Well, today, we're going to find out what went wrong with Neville. Adrian Neville was around in the NXT pre-WWE Network era. He did have some tag team success, but when WWE was launching the WWE Network, they wanted to run a live special with NXT. The main event of this first live special was none other than Neville versus Bo Dallas in a ladder match for the NXT Championship. He ended up beating Bo Dallas and became the NXT Champion. After this, he would go on to hold the championship for a total of 287 days, having many different memorable programs along the way. This era of NXT was amazing to watch. It was so different than anything else we were seeing in WWE, and it was even different than anything on the independent scene. This brand was free and innovative, and it worked. Neville fit perfectly with this early NXT. Neville had everything that it took to succeed NXT and become a star on the main roster. When he came up to the main roster, he was used as a superhero type gimmick and would have some mild success until he got injured. During a match with Chris Jericho, he delivered a Hurricane Rana and fractured his ankle. Neville would miss four months of action and not be able to compete at WrestleMania 32. When he did return, WWE didn't do much with him. He was absent from TV and he wasn't doing much in short time. Since Neville was out of action, WWE launched the Cruiserweight division. When Neville was brought back, he was put right into the Cruiserweight division. Things were different though. He was now a bad guy. This personality change was much needed and the character, well, he still portrays that to this day. Neville would go on to be a two-time Cruiserweight champion and be featured prominently on 205 Live. Now, 205 Live in the Cruiserweight division was in a weird place. When it first started, they were featured on Monday Night Raw. But in no time, WWE stopped featuring them and made them exclusive to 205 Live on the WWE Network. Neville was upset. He didn't feel that his place was on 205 Live and thought he deserved much better. He didn't feel that he was being used properly and wanted to be a full-time Raw superstar. In October of 2017, he walked out on Raw. He was upset that he was going to lose to Enzo Amore and didn't like the direction his character was going. He always wanted to be on the main roster. The Dirt Sheets were going crazy at this time, saying that Neville asked for his release and he was leaving the company. However, WWE denied this rumor and said he wasn't leaving. By November, reports came out saying that they were going to reach a positive agreement and that Neville was going to get back on TV. This was not the case. In January of 2018, WWE froze Neville's contract and wouldn't let him out. They wanted him to sign a new agreement. This would go on all the way to August of 2018 before Neville was finally released from his WWE contract. Now this is something that I don't think we see in WWE a lot. A superstar didn't want to be there because they felt they were being used improperly, but WWE wouldn't let them go. There was no fixing the issue with Neville. He felt that he should have been a main eventer, but WWE saw his role in the Cruiserweight division. They couldn't come to an agreement, and WWE froze the contract until he was eventually released. Now maybe if Neville would have stuck it out in the Cruiserweight division, he could have eventually been promoted to the main show and featured in big matches. However, because he decided to sit out his contract and then leave WWE, we never know what could have happened with Neville in the WWE.